Today, glass is everywhere. We use it constantly in a variety of forms and for a variety of reasons. While most glass is used to cater to daily necessity and created on an industrial scale, some people are still interested in making it for the art. My name is Keith Rowe. I'm your local glass blower. Keith has owned his studio in the Blue Mountains for over 20 years and has been working with glass for over 30. His work is exhibited in galleries both around the country and abroad. After moving to Australia from New Zealand as a teenager, his early love of photography led him to enrol in the Sydney College of the Arts. In my first year of art school we did uh, sort of small block section, sections through the year and uh, one of those sessions that I hit was um, the glass blowing. Well, it was a glass section but they just got the glass blowing unit. They had a, a mobile furnace there. Art school for me was just like, what sort of circus have I engaged in it? This really people, this is what people do. You know, I've heard artists were a bit weird, but these people are really weird. Despite his newfound interest, Keith never lost track of his earlier forays into art. The photography was always there and has always and still is there. It's, it's a major part, I think, of what, what I do anyway, the way I see things. Uh, it affects what I make, it affects the glass, the shapes, the colours, the textures, just the crossover is, it's not really a crossover, it's just an amalgam really now of, of the way that I see photography and how I translate some of those images into the glass. He says the hand and glass market went through a transformation when he left art school. I started selling in small little craft shop galleries that had predominantly um, ceramic, like bent mugs and stuff like this, and we, that was the marketplace. And there was nothing there like there was a decade later. There was people in America and Europe developing a culture, a glass studio, glass culture. It just took off. It just, it did. It, it was quite wonderful. However, it has once again changed to cater for a modern world. It's there, but it's a more professionalised, it's a more commercialised um, world. It doesn't have that. There are still uh, pockets of that sort of old world style of looking, but we're in the 21st century. You know, people require things, people want things. Um, as much as I can do is, is put my own own stamp on the objects that I make. I can't do anything else. It's like I come into work and I make things and people like what I make and they take it away. And that's been going on for 30 years. I can't explain how or why I managed to keep existing on this level, this lifestyle level. It's very very fragile existence that I live in. My overheads are low and my income is low. So I live in a very narrow band right now, narrow band. But I actually don't want to live anywhere else. From the Blackheath workshop, Keith's art travels far and wide, but also just across the highway to his gallery where his wife works. My name is Kayo Yokoyama and I'm an artist. Kayo primarily engraves glass, both Keith's work and her own. Keith is, he, he does blow glass for me because he's better, you know, much better than I can. It's just a time frame. But I do make my own glass too, I blow glass as well. Because you have to know how to make them, you have to know how difficult to make this shape or that shape, otherwise it's not going to work. Kaio's early aspirations to become a Western girl led her out of Japan, but her cultural heritage shines through in her glass. So when I started making a glass, because glass was such a fascinating material that I could blow, I could carve, I could engrave, do anything. And I started making home, because I lost the track where I belong, because I was so denying about being a Japanese. So I wanted to become American, and the American dream was a little bit different from what I saw. So I came to Australia kind of halfway, so I decided to make home. 
that's why I do lots of tree engravings and I have a little chairs inside because that's where I belong, where I sit and I can look at and I feel safe, maybe.